So hello, this is Rene Pickard speaking and in this video I will actually explain you why an Ethernet frame has to have a certain minimal length. So the reason is actually pretty simple. Ethernet is a non-deterministic protocol. What this means is that any device on the network can start transferring data at any given time. And what could happen then is that a collision could occur and we recall from the first video of this series what this means. A big problem is, is who's actually supposed to use the medium. So if A starts to transfer some data, at some point in time B might also decide, hey, I want to use the medium and transfer some data. So now what's happening actually is that C receives corrupted data because it receives the data from A and B. And what you want to achieve is that when you send data, you want to occupy the entire shared medium. You want to occupy the entire wire. So when you just transfer one bit of data and let's assume that you have a 100 megabit ethernet card um, 100 megabit ethernet means that you can send 100 million bits per second and this means that for sending one bit you have 10 nanoseconds of time basically uh, since transferring a bit over the cable means that you put an electromagnetic wave on the cable the data spreads at the speed of light and the speed of light is approximately something like 300 million meters per second so you can multiply this with 10 nanoseconds and what you see is that on a 100 megabit ethernet device within one clock cycle the signal would have traveled something like three meters and this means that if you only put one bit on the cable and you want to really occupy the entire network and the entire medium, the medium has to be shorter than three meters. And obviously this doesn't really make sense. If you consider using Ethernet in an office, you might have um, cables have to be as long as 100 meters or 200 meters. So what the inventors of Ethernet did is they said, well, let's just um, fight this problem by creating Ethernet frames that have to have a certain minimum length. What we already know from the last video is that the data section of an Ethernet frame has to be at least 46 bytes. So even if you only want to send one bit of data, you still have to have a data payload of 46 bytes. Um, additionally, there are 18 bytes for header and checksum, so this makes 64 bytes. Multiply this by 8 bits, which are in a byte, so you have 512 bits. And these are the amount of clock cycles that you occupy the wire when you start transferring Ethernet. So you can multiply this by 3 meters per clock cycle, and then you realize that you can actually achieve a distance of something like 1.5 kilometers. Um, in real Ethernet, the distance that is supported will be a little bit shorter in order to make sure that everything really, really works fine. But what you could have seen from this video now is that you really want to occupy the entire cable all the time when you're sending. And of course you could have achieved this in, in various ways. You could have made the cable shorter, you could have made the packages longer, you can also change the clock frequency, so the amount of bits that you would be able to transfer per second. And all of this stuff actually um, is something that we can calculate. The only thing that you obviously cannot change is the speed of light. I hope this video was helpful for you and in the next video we'll actually learn how you can use this occupation of the entire medium in order to detect collisions and make the last part or the last requirement of Ethernet actually really work. So I am Rene Pickard speaking and this video is part of the Web Science MOOC. Um, we hope that this was helpful for you and that you will join our MOOC. Goodbye.